welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 11, 2014, and let's get straight into our top story tonight. FBI director confirms criminal probe of the VA, which this is good news because it's largely a, a distraction by the Bergdahl situation, so I'm glad we can get some more light on this. FBI director James Comey confirmed Wednesday that the Bureau's Phoenix branch has opened a criminal investigation of the Veterans Affairs Department amid mounting calls on Capitol Hill for the Justice Department to get more involved. So, you know, we see uh, all the veterans being denied care, and that's one of the big reasons why people join the military. They say, hey, you know, I'll join the military, I'll be set for life, and it comes, uh, comes back. You know, you don't get that care. We've seen Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, our very own, he goes to the VA last month in May, says, hey, I have internal bleeding, I need help. They say, come back in July. And many similar stories of people all over the country. And regardless if you believe in everything the military does, you know, I've been critical of them growing the opium in Afghanistan, but I'm not mad at the individual troops. I'm mad at the guys who gave the order. So hopefully we can get some justice for these veterans and, you know, so they can find out that their health care should be absolute if they serve this country. But one thing President Obama says is not absolute is your second amendment. We have this, Obama endorses Australian style gun confiscation. A Couple of decades ago, Australia uh, had a mass shooting, mm -hmm. uh, similar to Columbine or, or Newtown. Uh, and Australia just said, well, that's it. We're, we're not doing, we're not do seeing that again. Yeah. And uh, basically imposed very severe, tough uh, gun laws, and they've never, they haven't had a mass shooting since. And there's one more thing I'd like to point out in the article. Invoking his role as a parent, Obama pushes the notion that American gun owners are collectively responsible for mass shootings. This country has a lot of soul searching to do, Obama said. This is becoming the norm, and we take it for granted in ways that as a parent terrify me. So this is a president, uh, he has an administration that has run guns into Mexico with Operation Fast and Furious. And you know, you guys may have seen the clip, he says, well, I have a big government, I have a lot of moving parts, I can't be responsible for what everybody does. Okay, maybe you don't know what everybody's doing, but once you find out what they're doing, why don't you hold the people responsible? And by responsible, I don't mean you let the Justice Department investigate themselves. You know, or you have the other uh, situations like with the Syrian rebels. You have an administration who is giving arms to Syrian rebels, Al-Qaeda rebels, and he's very much involved in this, very much knows exactly what's going on. Al-Qaeda rebels who are killing people in Syria, killing Christians, uh, doing all types of horrible things, but he wants to blame the U.S. gun owner. And to go back to the Mexico angle for one second, this is a president who goes down to Mexico and says the reason Mexicans have such high gun violence is because of the United States Second Amendment but as we said, his administration is running guns down there to known drug dealers, known cartel members, because we have all this talk about background checks here in the States. Meanwhile, I guess they did do the background checks and found out that these guys were corrupt, uh, criminal enough to deserve these weapons. But let's go back and talk about the Syrian angle, the, uh, the Al-Qaeda rebels uh, specifically, because it's not just in Syria. We also have situations going on in Iraq. And the headline reads, Islamic jihadis take over second largest city in Iraq but al-Qaeda wasn't even in Iraq until the U.S. invaded. And if you go to Infowars.com, you can see a, uh, a database there, a graph. And if you look at the graph, you can see about 2002, you had this large spike of terrorist activity, or should I say activities not carried out by the government specifically. And the article reads, al-Qaeda wasn't even in Iraq until the U.S. invaded the country and that the U.S. policy in Libya is partly responsible for sending an influx of al-Qaeda terrorists and heavy weapons into Iraq. To make matters worse, the army fled, so militants seized huge caches of U.S. supplied weapons, including Humvees. And if you go to the article on Infowars.com, you can see these guys, the al-Qaeda rebels, walking around, looking at Humvees and other, uh, other armaments. You know, al-Qaeda's gonna pop some tags, they only got $20 in their pocket, so what do you do? You go to the U.S. cache, and you steal military weaponry. And people will say, well, isn't this a good reason to bring these things home, bring these big MRAPs and other things to the United States so the terrorists can't get them? No, because when you bring these things home, number one, you have military vehicles on the streets of the United States. And I mean, what does that say about our country? And it's not because, you know, some guy wanted to dress up like the Joker and kill some people. No, that just shows that they're have, they have a domestic arms race to get these things on the streets. But on top of that, you're feeding into the military-industrial complex when you bring these things back to the states. 
because you can't just take this thing around the corner to Joe's, you know, body shop. You have to get specialized equipment, specialized training, specialized guys to come and work on these vehicles. You know, these things aren't your normal everyday minivans. And on top of that, you know, you think about the things going on in these, uh, these foreign countries, these foreign conflicts, that's also feeding the military industrial co complex. Whether they bring the things back home, they blow them up, they leave them there, you know, you have, you know, parking lots full of these military vehicles that have never even been used. You know, some of them have, a good number of them have, but there's some that have never even been used. Once again, feeding into the military industrial complex. So, you know, don't feed into the military industrial complex is basically what I'm getting at. And Kurt Nimmo has that article as well. Iraq would not even have Al-Qaeda Al if the state allowed citizens to be armed. And that's a very real statement because you think about this. It would be like some foreign government coming to the United States, giving the Crips and Bloods all these arms and then saying, hey, you go deal with the problem. It's like, well, you gave these guys the arms. Why don't you go fix the problem? And then sometimes they don't even want you to come fix the problem. Okay, you gave these guys the arms. We have to deal with it. We'll deal with it in our own way. We don't need your intervention anymore because you've wrecked our country enough. So you can find those articles on Infowars.com. And speaking of wrecking the country, we have been wrecked economically. And that's very true. It has a very good illustration on this. 19 reasons why you can laugh when anyone tells you that the economy is in good shape. Now, for the sake of time, we won't go through them all, but we'll hit some of the high points here. We'll start with number one. Radio Shack is closing an additional 200 stores on top of what they already said they would close. Number two, the first quarter earnings of this year, uh, the top U.S. giants, uh, retailer giants, missed the estimates by the largest gap in 13 years. Uh, number three, one out of every three grocery store workers in the state of California is on some form of public assistance. And I'll briefly tell you guys my uh, grocery store experience. Back when I was in high school, I worked at a grocery store. I made six, seven dollars an hour. Now, I was in high school, so I was living at home, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, if you try to raise a family on that, it's very hard. And people may say, well, why don't you just give everybody a raise? And I have no issue with people making more money. My thing I want uh, people to understand is if you have a Federal Reserve that's consistently devaluing your currency, regardless of what they pay you, if they, okay, if you get, do get your $15 an hour raise, you know, seven years from now when $15 an hour is the new $7 an hour, you can be right back out there again saying that you need more money. It's the system that's broken, not just the fact that, you know, McDonald's doesn't want to pay you more. And let's look at one more here. According to one recent survey, this is number five, 52% of Americans cannot even afford the house that they are living in right now. So like I said, you have a, a Federal Reserve devaluing your currency. And, you know, so not only that, but you don't want to stay in the sacking grocery jobs for your entire life. You don't want to say, uh, you know, shaking the fries out for the rest of your life. You want to go up because, you know, hey, make more money. But, bro, you're not going to drive a Ferrari, sacking groceries at, you know, the Quickie Mart or wherever it is that you work. So, you know, when they tell you that, the economy is, is good and everything's rosy, just say, no, it's not. It is not rosy. And we'll end our segment tonight on this. Illegal immigrants intentionally surrendering to Border Patrol to gain entry to the United States. Our Border Patrol is doing the best and the most kind and humane thing uh, with, uh, with the children. Border Patrol has always been a good partner of the city of Nogales, and they work very closely with us in the city of Nogales. Now as a city, we need to help Border Patrol so that they can uh, accomplish their, their, their goal and uh, making sure that these children are all taken care of. It used to be that people tried to avoid Border Patrol ICE if they were illegal immigrants, but now they just walk across the border, hey, I give up, and then the Border Patrol says, hey, okay, you're here in the United States, we'll drive you to a facility, free food, free clothes, uh, you know, free facilities, you can get uh, in-state tuition in states like Texas, and it's a whole good deal. So we'll talk more about this, and I don't have a problem with people coming here to the United States, just do so legally. But we'll talk to uh, the crew there in San Antonio right now at one of these facilities where this is going on, where they're spending your taxpayer money to house illegal immigrants. I'm kind of the the uh, Rand Paul situation, let's get rid of some of these illegal immigrants and exchange them for Marines or, you know, maybe even send a few Democrats down there. Whatever, whatever it takes to get the ball rolling again. But stay tuned for that because we'll be talking to the guys right after this break. But first, if you like this broadcast and you would like to see it continue, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Rants, the Special Reports, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. And stay tuned for the end of our show 
because we'll have some excerpts from the Alex Jones radio show. We'll talk to Telly Blackwood of Off the Hook TV and also the Food Babe and her new initiative to find out what exactly is in your beer. So stay tuned for all that. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. We've seen the stories about immigrants pouring into the country. And now the InfoWars crew is down in San Antonio at one of the military facilities where the immigrants are being held. Uh, InfoWars reporters Kit Daniel and also Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs are on the scene. How are you doing, guys? Good, good, good. Okay, so first tell us where you are and what's going on out there. Well, we're here at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, where one of the former uh, basic training dorms has been reappropriated to house about 2,000 illegal immigrants. Wow. And we, uh, we found the area where they're being housed. There's a, it's uh, barricaded with fi uh, fences all around it with uh, privacy screens to try to keep people from looking into it. Uh, there's, a, there's several porta potties in the area, one that even says restricted for youth only, indicating for the illegal uh, children, mm -hmm. illegal uh, youth immigrants. Also, there's, we saw about two 18-wheeler uh, trailers from HEB that are likely there providing food. And for uh, we, people who don't know who aren't from Texas, HEB is a, uh, a grocery store. Go ahead, Kit. Yes. And uh, also, I got some footage of, of several uh, loads of trash. Um, to, to back up, the, I talked to the Lackland Public Affairs, and they told me that they were not on the lead on this uh, housing these immigrants. They had, the Department of Health and Human Services, the, uh, and I believe it's the Administration of Family and Children in particular of HHS, as take is uh, in charge of the housing and processing of these illegal immigrants, and they have actually subcontracted it to a group called BCS out of San Antonio, which is a nonprofit faith-based organization. And if, when you when we bring in the footage later, you'll see uh, BCFS uh, to, uh, men wearing BCFS shirts and whatnot. So let me so ask you this, Kit. Uh, are the people there, are they mostly children? Are they our children, all children? Uh, how many children do you see out there? Let's, uh, I'll let, I'll let uh, Staff Sergeant Biggs answer that question. Yeah, most of the uh, what I saw were from, I'd say, teenagers, from anywhere from teenagers all the way down to, you know, maybe, what, five years, you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah, five years old, somewhere in that in that area. They're running around, you know, playing right now. A group of children were singing songs. Um, you could hear that over the fence. But, you know, one of the, the interesting things is, though, is we have these illegal immigrants staying here on a military facility while homeless veterans are outside the gate right now mm -hmm. with no shelter and no food. But these kids are being flown in and brought in by the busloads and being taken care of. I just think that's... It is. It's just wrong because you recall Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, they didn't want people to go to uh, the various monuments around the United States because of the se sequestration, because of the budget cuts, and they spent more money trying to keep people out of these monuments than actually just letting them in and just do what they want to do and uh, celebrate their country anyway. But Staff Sergeant, let me ask you this, because you're a military man. Have you ever seen anything like this happen on the military base where they just brought in illegal immigrants to, to house at the facility? Negative. First time. Also, one of the, the strange things I noticed as well, and I was telling the guys as we were coming up, all the guards today, I don't know this is how it's, you know, if it's something is up or whatever, but it's weird that they have M4 strapped around their chest. That's usually not something you see, maybe a sidearm, but every gate right now, all the MPs have MP, or M4s strapped to their chest. Now, I don't know if that's because of them housing these kids here, but I do know that the PAO didn't want anybody here filming and they didn't want us talking about this stuff. So I, I kind of think that's a little odd, don't you? Yes, I, I called the PAO before we arrived on the scene. And what she told me, she confirmed that, yes, they were housing illegal immigrants here on base. But what was also more disturbing was the fact that she said that no, no press access. They had one media day uh, recently where they allowed press on base without cameras. They wouldn't allow press to even come on and even film or even interview any of the immigrants or the staff. Or, so were you guys able to actually make it on the grounds of the base? Is that where you are right now? Yes, yes. Okay, so you guys made it in and you got your shots out there, but they said they're not, they pretty much have a press blackout. Uh, you even said that the press that was allowed was very censored. You know, they allowed them in, but allowed no cameras to be a company. That's very strange. It's a very 
strange happening. So what uh, response did you get when you guys arrived on the scene? Well, when we got there, we uh, drove around. They have a roving security guard within that, that, that little post area. And uh, they're walking around watching. Uh, it looks like they had some kind of like a, uh, a communications uh, compound set up outside that gate with satellite and all that right beside those HEB trailers. So, yeah, they're definitely restricting media in this area. But uh, other than that, what did you see that would you notice? Well, the one thing that really it's really chilling is I read a news article that said it's costing American taxpayers two hundred and fifty dollars a day to house just the children. Wow. There's probably about, I would say about 1,500 to 2,000 children here. And these kids are out, you know, having fun, playing uh, soccer, playing basketball. I got footage of s several of the staff members just driving around in their little uh, golf carts, picking up uh, soccer balls that fell over the fence. <laughs> and so American taxpayers are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars to host illegal immigrants who are playing basketball. Whereas we can't even take care of our own homeless vets. Well, uh, President Obama just gave them $2 billion for the year for this. Yes. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, we can't get, we can't hire doctors at these veterans affairs centers. We can't pay to get this treatment done. We can't get people who need it, Americans seen. We can't get them the health care they need. And yet these kids are just running around having a heyday, eating free food, staying at a, at a barracks place, getting to play soccer. I mean, sounds like fun to me. Well, the thing that we're really not addressing is why people want to come here in the first place. And one of the reasons I do believe is because of the violence in Mexico. But the, the situation that nobody ever wants to talk about is Operation Fast and Furious. We have all these guns going from the ATF down there to Mexico, which makes it a dangerous situation. As I say, hopefully things will be better for them as far as safety here in the States. So we have a problem where we're sending the guns down there, but once the guns get down there, the people come here and then they want to spend American tax dollars to house these people. Yeah, but the truth is actually even more bizarre than that because most of these immigrants are from Central America. They're from El Salvador, Guatemala, Ecuador. Ecuador. So even just beyond the border, why are people coming from uh, so far away? Because these all these immigrants, there's rumors in Central America that if you come to America, you will get amnesty. And even the uh, newspapers in Central America are telling its citizens, if you go to this, in the United States, you will probably get amnesty. Yep. And Obama administration has recently, through the Department of Homeland Security, put in a new policy for, they actually renewed a policy they initiated in 2012 called DACA, which is Delayed Action on Childhood Arrivals, meaning that illegal uh, youth that come to this country the D Department of Homeland Security is giving them a two-year amnesty in which they will not deport these children. So and that, and also ties back into when President Reagan signed in the Amnesty Act in 1986. One of the side effects of that act was that the family members of, of illegal immigrants that then gained amnesty, they moved to the United States too. So amnesty in 1986 exploded illegal immigration. And that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing here now, even though there's not uh, amnesty by legislation, but by the fact that the Obama administration through selective enforcement and through executive action is basically making a de facto amnesty, that's enough to to increase Im the illegal immigration by tens of thousands the past couple and of weeks. And not, not even just that, but you also have all the incentives where if you can make it to the state of Texas, you get in-state tuition and other places you can get driver's licenses and so forth. But as we wind down our interview, I know you guys have to get back here and get your footage uploaded and so forth. But give me your final thoughts. You know, what struck out, uh, stuck out most to you uh, from your time there on the base? Well, what bothers me is to start off, I'm not against immigration. I'm very libertarian in the sense that I believe that people should be given a chance to make a, a better life for themselves as individuals. What I do have a problem with, however, is the fact that the our government is pushing the costs of this immigration onto taxpayers and they are bankrupt in the country. So the country is going to be worse for everybody, including the newly arrived immigrants. So this is a this is a bad deal for everyone involved in the nation. The biggest thing I don't like is the $2 billion we're spending on this. And we have Americans right now suffering, homeless, without food, without shelter. And we're, we're dumping all this money here. It's, it's a, we're not using the funds properly. Exactly, exactly. And 
I, I second what you guys say. I have no problem with people coming here, but they have to come here legally because we I mean, have a, a, a system set place. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have a system set up where we have a border patrol, we have ICE, we have these other agencies that are uh, there to enforce the border. But if you can sneak past them or even uh, the more modern times, if you can just go and surrender to them, then you get all these goodies and all these benefits. You can come here, but you have to do it the proper way. Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com. Thank you for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you heard the guys say it. You know, there's not been much press coverage at that facility. They had the, you know, the staged media day where you could come in with no cameras and I guess, you know, just write down what you saw. But these guys, they're out there. They're in the field. They're out there in the Texas heat trying to bring you this hot story. The story is even hotter than the Texas heat, but that's what we have to do here in the info war and how you can support us, how we can send these guys out. You can go to Prison Planet and welcome back. Telly Blackwood, an InfoWars.com contributor and a regular guest of our programming, was approached by feds. Uh, federal agents came to his house and they wanted to know about his affiliation with Alex Jones. Now, this is just another in a long list of chilling effects for ourselves and for our guests. They don't want people to grow in the liberty movement to become more prominent, so they come and they try to scare you with all these fear tactics. So let's see what Telly has to say in his own words. Why do you think they wanted to come to you and ask you about Alex Jones and say you're being watched when you've just entered some of our contests, we've interviewed you four or five times, like your work? Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, I think it's just to intimidate you and to get the message to me. I think it was mainly a, I get the message to you kind of thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure they would know you guys the first person. I didn't know there was a tyranny and they diesel people to death in federal vehicles and that they torture kids and run snuff film operations. I didn't know they could kill me and my family. I'm so scared now. I didn't know they were evil, Telly. <laughs> well, the, 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 the funny thing is, other than the guy talking to the suit, he's the only one that said any words. Two big thugs that sat there and snarled. But yeah, I guess they're into black fatigues, not arms. It's plain black, you know, fatigues the boots and, you know, short trimmed hair. The only did is kind of have their hands on their hip or across behind their back and just sit and snarled and tried to stare at me, not even blink the whole time. I had a lot of military in the family and everything, so I'm not really that stupid by someone just staring at me. You know what I mean? But just the fact they'll come in and try to, you know, at first I thought it was a joke, to be honest. I'm like, what is going on here? Okay, where's the camera? Where's someone? Yeah, no, no, that's saying, the ah, problem ah. is them bugging their eyes out at you and radiating. They want to just rip your head off. I mean, they have this, the ATF came here one time, and there was this one really, like, big guy, you could tell. Yeah, he was, like, solid muscle, and he was just going, just looking at me, just, Egh. and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just like, God, the dishonor of these people. I yeah, mean, the like dishonor, they're so, they're so weak. They think evil is powerful. They worship at that dark throne. Go ahead. Yeah, I, think, I think I've been a wrestler for a lot of years. I've seen a lot bigger, meaner people than those guys. So them snarling at me as kind They of all bad. cry for their mama in the end. Yeah, yeah everybody does. And we all, all go the same way and we all bleed the same color and everything. So, I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I know it's an intimidation thing. I know they're trying to, trying to get the message to you or... Like I was telling Biggs on uh, Facebook, I was saying, you know, it almost feels like, uh, it feels too perfect. It's almost like they want me to go and talk to you guys and get this on there. You know, what's the all behind that? I'm trying to be paranoid. Just try to no, no, they think we're all cowards. Things, but... They think everybody will hear this and get scared. That's the whole thing. Better not listen to Alex Jones. Better not be involved. Why? They, they, they just lowered the borders completely. They're coming after our guns. If we don't expose it, then we lose everything. That's the thing. I'm not a hero. Telly, you're not either. We have to stand up against this. I mean, they're arresting Tea Party people. They're arresting Dinesh D'Souza. They're, 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 the, the IRS is going after Christian groups. And look at Eric Holder putting his little Homeland Terrorist Task Force together, the FEMA camp, the, the NDA. What do people think that's for? It's not for good television. I mean, what, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think this is happening for? Hot off her win of getting Subway to remove yoga mat material from their breads, the Food Babe is back, this time with a petition targeting U.S. beer makers. She wants to find out what is in the U.S. beer supply, the contents of which may surprise you. And there's no conspiracy about this. The only conspiracy that's happening, actually, is within the beer companies, how they've lobbied the Treasury Department and the government to keep this information secret from us so they can to continue to make really, uh, like, really big bucks. I'm talking billions of dollars uh, by selling us cheap 
uh, harmful chemicals to us. And you know what's what's really important here when people start to think about these issues is that one signature, one voice can can magnify thousands. And so I just beg everyone to go to foodbabe.com slash beer and sign the petition because if we get millions of people behind this, these companies have nowhere to hide anymore because if people know about this information, they stop to buy those brands, they start buying other brands, or maybe they stop drinking beer altogether, which I did um, as a result. Uh, you know, and this is what increases the, 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 the health of the nation, the health of uh, transparency in, the, in, in our food environment. And I think, you know, by doing these type of campaigns led by, you know, someone like myself, and I hope others have enough courage to do these type of campaigns on their own and their own blogs, I think we can really take over the world because there's more people than there are that work at Monsanto and that work at these beer companies. And, and there's more people collectively that pay for their products that we can actually take back the ownership and start voting with our dollars and doing the right thing. And, you know, before the break, Alex, you asked me, you said, you know, what, what do you think has made your campaign so successful? And I just, I just want to reiterate the fact that Make your voice heard, tell the truth, and ask your friends and family to share it. Like, ask them. They said, you know, tell them, like, this information is so important. Will you share it with someone you know that drinks beer or know that eats GMO corn every day in the form of, like, Subway sandwiches or whatever? You know, someone that you know, and everybody knows someone, right? Everyone knows someone who's drinking Miller Lite or Bud Light. Like, everyone I know knows somebody, whether it's your college kid that's in college at a college party or if it's your dad or if it's, you know, your neighbor or it's the person that brings the brew to the next barbecue. We all know someone drinking these brands. Shoot, just walk down the street and go into a bar and start telling people the truth about what's really in your beer. And say, Tell hey, bro, you know why, you know, beer gives you such a big belly. It's the high fructose corn syrup that's been in there for 30 years. You know, you ought to drink a local brew. And, and, yeah. say, and say, look, I'm not henpecking you. I care about you. Yeah, and people will be very it. thankful. And, you know, I think... You, you know, can also I say, hey, did you hear about the food bait? Man, she's smoking. You ought to check her out, and she discovered all this stuff that's in the beer. They want to keep it secret. <laughs> that's exactly right, you know. And um, well, the thing is, is a lot of people. I know the haters are going to come out, and what they're going to say is they're going to be like, "Oh, Food Babe wants to take away our beer. She's trying to make a, a mountain of a molehill, you know." And I'm not trying to do any of hey, that. Hey, if that's the case, show us what's in it. If that's the case, tell us, because I mean, there should only be four or five ingredients in beer. Well, you heard it right there. The food crisis is not coming, it's already here. Whether it's high-priced food, GMOs in the food, or simply unavailable food, you don't want to get caught in a position where you have nothing to eat. That's why you need to go to InfoWarsShop.com and pick up My Patriot Supply. You can get these for individuals, you can get them for families, whatever you need. It's all right there at InfoWarsShop.com. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.